So now that we've created this page utilizing HTML, I just want to show you a couple of other table attributes that you can add to change the way that your table looks or functions. We'll be using this simple table that we completed in the last exercise. Here's the HTML from the last exercise. What we're going to be doing in this exercise is we're going to control some of the visual appearance of how the content appears within our table. Now again, it's advisable that you usually apply these sorts of visual changes utilizing CSS, but I do want to share the techniques with you because you may come across them when you're working with older projects or if you're doing some sort of email campaign where this is more common. What we're going to be doing in this exercise is we're going to be changing the background color of some of our table cells. In addition to that, we're going to be controlling the vertical spacing of the content as it appears in the cell. Because our bird image has a specified amount of height associated to it, it's forcing the table cells that are in the same row to take on that same height. And what it does is it takes the text and it centers them vertically inside of the table cell. Sometimes you may want the text to be vertically aligned in a different way. So let's look at how we can make those sorts of changes. Inside the HTML, I'm going to locate the table cell that I want to change the vertical alignment on and all I'm going to do to change vertical alignment is I'm going to pass on the V align attribute then I'll put equals and then inside of the quotation I'll pass on the value in this case I'm going to specify bottom if I save and we go look in the browser and refresh the browser you're going to see that now that text is aligned to the bottom so by making that simple change to the attribute I can control the text what we'll do is we'll actually align the text to the top so I'm going to change the bottom keyword to top the values that you can use for the vertical alignment are top middle which is the default behavior bottom and you can also use baseline the baseline is that imaginary line in which most letters sit on in a line of text. This will often have the same effect as the bottom value, but if the fonts are different sizes, the baseline might look better than using bottom. For our purposes here, we're going to set this to top. In addition to setting the text alignment to top, I'm going to set the background color of this cell so that it displays something other than white. To set background color, we use the B G color attribute and then inside of the quotation marks after the equal sign we'll pass on the value for the color the values that you can pass on with BG color are a color name and this would specify the background color so I could do something like type red and if I save this and display it in the browser you're gonna see that the background color now appears red and the text goes to the top of the cell as well in addition to using the keyword names, you can also use hex values. Hex values will allow you to pass on a special numeric and character based value that will represent a specific color. So I'm going to use 99CCCC. Hex values are always going to be written as a combination of six character and numeric values. And in HTML, we always have to preface our hex value with a hash mark right here, or a number sign. So every time we write the hex value, we'll always write the number sign first, and then add the characters and numbers that represent the hex value. And what this combination of numbers and characters means is that each number and character pair represents either the R, G, or B values of a color. In order to display this color of turquoise, the hex value for that specific color is 99CCCC. If I save now and we go look inside of the browser, you'll notice that this table cell now displays with a turquoise background. Let's make some additional visual changes to this page. I'm going to vertically align this text to the top of the cell. So again, I'm just going to use that V align top. So I'll go to the TD tag and I'll pass on the V align top. And if I save and we preview in the browser, you're going to notice that the text goes to the top. Now it is worth pointing out that the text in this cell and the text in this cell align a little bit differently. 
why does this cell appear to have an additional space at the top? Well, if we look back in our code, you can see that this third table column actually has the text wrapped inside of a p tag. p tags are block level elements which means that the browser actually adds some formatting to any block level element. So because this text is wrapped inside of the p tag the browser is automatically creating some extra spacing on top and underneath this particular paragraph. Since this text, it just exists inside of the TD, the table cell, it doesn't have that extra space. If we wanted to create that additional space, we could easily change that by simply wrapping this text inside of our P tag. And I'm just going to get the closing paragraph tag and I'll cut that and I'll put it at the end of my text. If I save the page now and we go look inside of the browser, you can now see that both table cells display the text where it's been pushed down slightly. The last thing that I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to change the background color of all of these three header cells together. Instead of applying the BG color to the TD or to the TH tags, I'm going to apply it to the TR tag. Because I want to have all of the cells in this row have the same background color, I will just go ahead and pass on the background color to the TR. You can add background color to any of the cells inside of a table. So the TD tags, the TR tags, TH tags, or even the table tag. If you add it to the table tag, then the entire table is going to take on that background color. Whenever you use hex values though, I need to make sure that I preface the hex value with a hash sign. If I don't use the hash sign, some browsers will not display the color appropriately. I'm going to save this and I'm going to look inside of my browser and now you can see that my table has transformed. The very top row, all three of the table cells are going to have the yellow background color and then this table cell right here is going to take on this turquoise background color. We've also augmented the vertical alignment of the content that appears within the cells by using the V-Align property. One other change that I want to share with you is we can also control the overall width of the table by specifying width. I'm going to go ahead and apply this attribute to my table tag. So I'll go into the table tag and I'm going to plug in a width value. I'm going to use width equals and then inside of the quotes I'll pass on the actual value that I want. And I'm just going to specify 500. I'll save and if we go back into the browser and refresh you can now see that my table has become smaller and that's because I've specified a fixed value of 500. 500 refers to pixels. Whenever we're using HTML values if you want to represent pixels you don't put any sort of extension you just write the number. In addition to utilizing pixels for the width value you can also specify percent. So if I type this as a percent based value and I save and we go into the browser and refresh you can see that now the table has changed slightly. Now not very much. Watch what happens however if I resize the my window. If I resize my window you can see that my table gets larger or smaller. And you probably can't see me resizing my window but I'm dragging it out to the right which is off the capture screen and you can see that the table appears to be getting larger. If I bring the edge of my window in, you can see that my table will start to shrink until it gets to a certain point in which it can't shrink anymore. The reason it's no longer changing size is because the content inside my table can't get any smaller. So the table physically can't get any smaller and still hold this amount of content. So at some point even if we've specified a specific percent based width, the table may no longer augment and that is because the content needs to have X amount of space to stay open. If I change that back to the pixel based value that we had before and save my page and go back into the browser and refresh, you can now see when I resize my window that my table does not change width. So that's yet another attribute that you can pass on to your tables to be able to alter the width of the table itself. If you visit the W3 schools and you look 
under the table section, you can actually find a list of all of the attributes that you can pass on to your tables. So we've talked about quite a few of the more commonly used attributes that you might use with the tables, but there's a couple of other ones in here that you can look into as well. It is worth noting that many of the attributes you can see in the description that they're not supported in HTML5. So HTML5 has deprecated many of these attributes because you should be using CSS to do these sorts of things. But because right now we're working with XHTML documents, it's perfectly fine to utilize these attributes. And because we don't know any CSS yet, we'll go ahead and use these attributes and this will also allow you to be able to learn how to use these things on your web pages.